Hey guys, Zach Mars here, and welcome back to Toki Doki Literature Club. So we didn't actually get into anything scary yet, even though it's supposed to be, but... Um... I'm um, just picking random words again. goes I hit my microphone another day passes it's time for a club meeting already I got a little more comfortable here over the past couple days entering the club room the usual scene greets me hi Zach yo Sayori looks like you're in a good mood today <laughs> I'm just not, still not used to you being in the club that's all I see that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. Well, I guess it's always the simple things with you, anyway. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, that, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Aori? Eh, <laughs> why that all of a sudden? <laughs> no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh -huh. See, nervously rude nervously retrieves her corn purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out on the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. I am psychic. <laughs> if you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. What? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. <laughs> if you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ahaha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't know she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. <laughs> Tell Zach to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in the, my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. <laughs> Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little more devil inside as all, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sorry knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to club before she even told me. The, the, you wouldn't have come if it, if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Quap. Yeah. I don't know where something smacks in Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> that's okay, but that's not nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Geez, just eat it. Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. 
Sorry, yeah. suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bet my tongue. <laughs> oh my god. This game's hilarious so far. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, yours look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> so he gets right out of her scene, goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arm around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie stone hand, Natsuki reaches up to snatch Sayori off her fur. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> wow. Did you just seriously just do that? Yeah, she did. She did. Deal with it. <laughs> Mouthful, Siri trusts away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez. You're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. Is this where things get dark, really dark? That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, hey, that's not true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I just hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Maka chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. The boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Maka quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Eh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Zach. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. This is just like me to just be casually fl not n flirting with a girl and not noticing it. That's kind of that's kind of how my life goes, pretty much. I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished off her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Zack, Zack! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Will you come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up? Me and Monica were going to make some posters and stuff, so I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Zack to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Ah, but I wanted to go. So much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Zack? Yep, let's go. When is the spooks gonna start? Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. 
Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Zach, you're not thinking about the right way at all. It's not just about beating poems. It's about performing them. Like you, like you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Kept pressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what end have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look at it in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's, in, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess it means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sorry, spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Zach, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this, but in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find- Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. <laughs> Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. I dropped one by accident. Smack. Yeah! Sorry bends over and smacks her forehead right in the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> You okay? My forehead. Sorry clutches her forehead. Geez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori's sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her uh, out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead and gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. The bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Zach, where, where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. Ah, uh, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out in the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already turning the classroom where he left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled, spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the box of bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cup and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> how hard How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayon, crayon so that's good. Hey, Zack. This kind of reminds me you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, hey, what do you mean? You know what we used to play outside all the time? It would always, I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scream myself or get a bump. And I would start crying real hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If, if I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Zack. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. 
Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. I, and I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Zack, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. You think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair to me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you, you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sari has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't like to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it, hide it under my bangs. Sayori so hops to her feet. <laughs> she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. <sighs> well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I really don't know how to do any of the spooky stuff. Follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the gun, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start with our sharing our poems. Eh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about... I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead down into the shelf. Well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have a right... Eh. Sorry, friend, glances glasses around yourself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Zach. Oh well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. We'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to show your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Uh. Uh. You. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Zach. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh. It's it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry too much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try <clears throat> Sorry. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and writing down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is it the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me your poem. The Raccoon. It, it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty sn snack. My attention was caught by scattering of a recruit outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a coon that is well fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The, the moon increments its phases and affects that much more lightly off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of the, my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Ah, uh, cool. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. 
using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. No one's gonna make fun of you. You're adorable. Don't you have anything like that, Zach? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. Alright. I don't know when spooks are going to happen. They're supposed to be... to come at some point, right? They're, they're, they're supposed to come at some point. It's been, like, two and a half hours. It's been, like, an hour and a half into the game now. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding anything, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one, too. You can't tell you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way. Not even Natsuki. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think that's it. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when so I'm thinking about you. Eh? Well... <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I'm just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <laughs> You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori so starts fiddling with a pencil between her hands. Hey, Zach, will you g give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Say I. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. Sorry, hastily brings down to pick up the pieces he dropped. But being inattentive to surroundings, she bumps right into me. So sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bent down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry clutches her desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. It's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Battles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kitchens. I reach inside with my thumb and third finger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy, happy, th happy thoughts. Happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Picking and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want to see my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I l let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I do is hear echo, 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 echo inside my head. 
Holy crap. Yeah, I really don't didn't know how to respond to that either. That that's pretty much my reaction. Just holy crap. <laughs> Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean I didn't expect anything like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kinda creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it that way. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Haha, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Zori always has a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Sorry, you have no idea what you're getting into. Just stay adorable. No wonder this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me for be pessimistic. Tsuki next. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Oh, well. If it... Well, anything that isn't a train, take, train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Uh, hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well, then keep practicing and maybe we'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of this. Come to think of it. This kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same line, wavelength. But you never really s struck me as her type. Sorry, has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how, how can someone or so, so or Fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say... We each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I, he I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy tried to help me up and chirped. Amy hurt me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders, too? That's no, why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. It was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Of course not! It would be even better if you wrote longer. It's fine. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can't explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an... Is an ignorant jerk. Do you know how many people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks it's mine. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. A road to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. You already wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to, to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Tsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about... Her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always say people make me feel insecure. And Yuri, and Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But 
but, but the way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Alright. Monica time! Hi again, Zach. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. I thought she took my poem for a second. It's like, okay, I'll take that and read it. I mean, okay, but now I understand what she's talking about. Okay, never mind, never mind. Ignore me, ignore me. I'm just here. I'm just a medium for this game right here. I'm just a medium for the game. I'm just a medium for the game, all right? So just, just ignore me, I'm, ignore me. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. You want, want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, it's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the, the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you spend a lot of time with her in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I'm not shy, it's just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit more time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them a share of their time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cac cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Speaking, screeching, piercing. Sign, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... load me hmm it's even more distracting than your last one <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write sorry if you don't like it no I never said that it's just the kind of thing I'd never really seen before I guess kind of like playing with my space on the paper choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem it's almost like magic the way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise I see and yet we never see my character's poem we never see it still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Uh -huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't really the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait. Is this tip even about writing? What am I talking about? What am I even talking about? And that's... And this is where things start to get weird. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was odd. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if I could... Everyone could come and sit at the front room of the table. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. So things are getting weird now because Monica just said something about saving games and that kind of thing. So so the game is starting to become a little bit self-aware. All right. It's odd. It's getting odd. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets so we can get we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great. Oh. <sighs> Ugh. What was that? But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, I'm sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? But, um, Monica? 
Yeah, we're going to all have a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sorry, put putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Alright. <laughs> Sorry, who's been coloring a poster? Hold it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting up those posters, did you? Eh well I did. Do you really think that's that's it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago? It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put each other, put, each put on a good performance, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show every, everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right! And in those reasons that and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes us standing in front of a room for two minutes and we're saying your poem, then I know you can do it. Oh Yuri. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sari looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? She's on ice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make that joke. It, it, it had been boiling in the... It had been spinning around in the back of my mind for like... A couple of days now. Yuri detectively glances around at everyone else expecting faces. I guess I really don't have a choice. Aha, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. The club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook of this, to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is called The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins to recite her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion beside each line she re recites, bringing the words to life. Words! What? I'm dyslexic! I'm sorry! Is this, is this something she's done before, is, or is she simply a natural? They glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Suri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. Ah, well, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Uh, why, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden? Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering voice, words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in a structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. 
This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri steps back into reality and glances around her if she as if she bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save this situation. It's, I'm the first to start plotting. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. But it's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Look, it's like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So he hops off to her chair and she really recites to the poem. This one is called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How, how did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think about it like you're saying to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the, be the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sorry begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. Serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sorry, finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Zack liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. And I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that sort of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next the next time I'm going to make a, you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Zack. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Zack lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much left of, of much of a selection of what to we read. I'll just ha have to go with what I wrote for today. Stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Which is kind of not like me. I mean, I am I did theater a little bit in high school, so I, I'm kind of used to speaking in front of a crowd. Just, like, my tip if you're going to do public speaking is just... Pretend you're the only one in the room. It worked. Pretend you're the only one in the room. Like, like just tune out the audience and just focus on your speech. That's really all I have to say. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I'll receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll prove over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her go to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting! <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a deep breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sadder out attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people w will be way easier. I can put on on whatever face I want for other people. But it's, when it's just with my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so, well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. 
Make sure to pick your poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time when you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write a poem for tomorrow as well. It, it's been working out really nice so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend prepared. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. You stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Looks like you two. Look at you two. Always going to home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Zach. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go, Ray. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. And something is loading on my computer. Just because there was a little circle next to my mouse. I don't know what that was. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um... I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um... We'll still walk home with you. Because we're buddies. Sorry. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I always see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem like really going home together. Wouldn't you just ruin that for you? You're so silly, Zach. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm... The conversation trails off. Kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. And I think I'm going to leave the episode here. So yeah. That was interesting what Monica said. About saving your game and that kind of stuff. I'm Yeah, this game is definitely starting to take a more meta turn, I guess would be the right word for it. It's starting to really draw in the audience a little bit. It's like starting to seem like it's becoming more self-aware. So, definitely, I think we're definitely going to see some more interesting developments in the next episode. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you like that, hit that like and that subscribe button. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!